Hello, my name is Dr. Alisha Babbar and I am very happy to tell you that I secured the NEET SS All India Rank 5 in the Pediatrics Group and I also secured Rank 1 in the INI Super Speciality Exam for Pediatric Gastroenterology. And in this video, I am going to discuss the various aspects of Pediatric Super Speciality about how and where you should prepare for super specialization exam and what are the pros and cons of doing the same and how should you choose a branch in pediatric super specialities. So talking about how to choose a branch uh, while doing pediatric super specialities. So the primary thing before choosing a branch in which you want to specialize in is whether you are genuinely interested in it or not. So while uh, through your residency days, uh, while you are posted to the various units, you must try to see whether working in that units and seeing those type of patients genuinely interests you or not. And this happens naturally. Sometimes when you are posted in the oncology wards, you like working for the cancer patients or there is an internal motivation that drives people to do oncology. So interest is the primary thing which should be the foremost priority while choosing a branch for super specialization. But more than that, also you have to figure out the practical aspect of it. Uh, which is where you want to settle down, where your family is living and whether you want to do government practice in future or a private practice. So now uh, according to the various branches, so talking about neonatology or something like pediatric critical care, these branches are such that you can practice them universally. Anywhere in India you will just find good quality jobs and well paid packages. But for some other branches like maybe pediatric cardiology or gastroenterology for that matter. So in these branches, these are somewhat niche branches, although the patient load is good, but you might uh, need to settle in bigger cities to be a good clinician or a successful person in these branches. So these are some things that you have to figure out before choosing a branch and also whether you want to practice in a government setup or a private setup. So practicing niche branches uh, can help you getting good opportunities as a consultant in government practice whereas something like neonatology gives you all the options open for government as well as private practice. So I think these are the factors that one must consider before choosing a branch. So discussing about the pros and cons of doing super specialization in pediatrics. So as far as I remember while we were doing MBBS we used to uh, hear that pediatrics is an end branch and this used to be a pro of taking pediatrics. But I don't think that is the scenario anymore. There are a lot of super specialization courses that are being actively done in pediatrics now. So what are the pros of doing super specialization? So first is that you can be the master of your subject. You can be actively involved in the research activities and also then you have better job opportunities both in the government as well as the private sector. Majority of the government jobs these days are given to super specialists only and also the pro is that if you're genuinely interested in a subject then you can go as deep as you want to in that subject. So I think these would be the pros of doing super specialization whereas it comes with the cons of having to do another residency of three years and sometimes serve a a state in which you may be bonded for one or two years and uh, also this comes at somewhat cost of uh, compromising your family life to some uh, extent uh, if that becomes the scenario for you. I think uh, pretty much that and also another thesis to do it's also sometimes painful but uh, if you're genuinely interested in a subject I think uh, doing a super specialization just opens a vast array of opportunities for you. So you must go for it if you're interested. So if the answer to do super specialization is yes, then there are two exams that you might need to give. That is one uh, is INI, that is Institute of National Importance Super Speciality exam and the other is the NEET SS exam. So to the agony of the people who are wanting to give the exam, the problem is that the pattern of both the exams is completely different although both are MCQ based exams but while in NEET SS we are expected to have a broader overview of the entire subject and uh, all the 150 to 200 questions are asked from the whole subject that could be pediatrics or medicine whatever 
but in the INI exam there would be just 80 questions out of which 50 would be relevant to the speciality you are getting in and you would have to answer that question at the first point what is the branch you are taking and then you appear for that and go deep into that subject and then uh, be evaluated for it and the other 30 questions would be same like NITES's uh, general overview of the entire speciality. Now the problem is in the INI exam also you cannot ignore these 30 questions because uh, it is a huge percentage of the total number of questions. So to strike a balance between preparing for both INI and NEET, uh, what you can do is that while you are doing your MD, taking help of something like a prep ladder app, you can uh, prepare for the general, the whole subject part of it using the app also while you are preparing for your university or professional exams that time only. So that time what you are doing is reading your Nelson or whatever standard textbook could be Harrison and side by side using the app and uh, looking at the MCQ perspective of it. And once you have done your MD, you have a good base of the general subject. And then if you are targeting INI, which is a biannual exam, so you get an opportunity to appear for it every six months. So that helps, whereas NITES is an annual exam and maybe uh, the next exam is just an year away. And uh, in between that, you will get another INI to give. So uh, after you are, have a strong base of the whole subject, then you go deeper into the speciality. You might have to read another textbook for that. For some specialties, for others, you may have to go through papers and the latest articles of that subject. So uh, having a good foundation from your MD and developing a deeper knowledge of your speciality, I think that would strike a balance between NITSS and INI preparation. And this is very important because you know INI exam, although uh, you will get the opportunity to go to central institutes, but it comes at the cost of giving an exam that has a very limited number of seats for majority of the specialities. Like uh, I appeared for pediatric gastroenterology. So in that specialty, it's just one seat in an year. So it becomes very difficult to sit back for one seat for an year. So you have to rely on an exam which has more number of seats that is NITSS. So uh, preparation of both has to go hand in hand. So something that gives you a strong foundation of the whole thing, something like a prep ladder app that would be useful. So summing it all up, uh, this is a situation that you have to individualize for yourself that if you are signing up for it, it is a journey that will take effort and hard work and dedication. And sometimes you have to look at the practical aspects of it also, like whether you're working or not working and what is the financial situation of your family? Is there a need to work or not? Like in my case, what happened with me was last year, I got the second rank in pediatric gastroenterology, but there was just one seat. So I had to reappear this year. I kept on working till July because the NEET SS was scheduled for September and the INI was going to be in November. So I worked till July, then I resigned and sat back and prepared for NEET SS for two months. And I formed a good base for the whole pediatric uh, subject or the subject as a whole. And uh, the, when the results came out, I got the fifth rank. I knew I would get pediatric gastroenterology. But still, I thought that the other exam INI is just two months away. And I sat back and again prepared for it, went deeper into gastroenterology and appeared. And this time, I could get the rank one so that I could get the seat. So this is an individual situation. And you have to find out what is the next upcoming exam and how many seats are there. So if the number of seats are limited and your financial situation is good and all, so you can sit and prepare. In my experience, I would say that people who are wholeheartedly and dedicatedly sitting for the exam preparing without working are getting better ranks and more opportunities than people who are working side by side and also preparing. But sometimes there's not an option also. So what you can do is make the most of the time that you have whatever free time you're getting through your postings during your MD or after that when you're working or the weekends that you're getting. In all those times, if you're signing up for it, then it has to be a journey of hard work. And uh, I think that would be all. Rep Ladder has been a great companion for me f through this last one and a half year of preparation for this exam that I could finally get through. The videos and the slides of Rep Ladder app have been the most useful. 
uh, although I have also given the MCQ exams and also the mock tests and grant tests and all in all I think uh, I can uh, give a, a huge uh, compliment and also can say that this has been a great uh, contributor to my journey uh, my go-to place for preparation while going through this journey of NEET SS and INI exam preparation. So all the best from my side to you and I would be happy to help you. Thank you.